following show is a paid program. family, thank you so much for joining the Cam Hill Show. On today, I have some great guests for you. But before I do that, I want to say uh, prayers to uh, the family of Chadwick Boseman. He was the actor for Black Panther. And on today, we wanted to do a special just on colon cancer. I wanted you to actually see and hear and understand what it means and really what it really means to our community. Chadwick Bozeman, he died at 43. He was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer in 2016, and he had a four year battle. On today, you will see Rose B. Johnson. She has a foundation, outstanding colon cancer foundation. She's been doing it for a long period of time. She is a colon cancer survivor. She was in stage four when she found out she had it. Joining her is my friend, uh, Cynthia Allen. She is the chair of the foundation. She, is, um, she owns C. Allen Productions Unlimited. And let me just tell you, thank God for uh, Cynthia. I thought of this idea when I heard about Chadwick passing, which was this weekend. And I rearranged the schedule because of this, because I thought it was a pivotal point that we need to hear both of them and hear Miss Rose's story. Miss Rose and Cynthia. How are you? Hi, Hello. Hey. Hi. I first want to thank both of you for coming on and really, my God, Cynthia turned this thing out around in 24 <laughs> seven. I called okay. her 24 hours and I said, I need help. And that's what she did. She said, I got you. I got somebody for you. Miss well, we Rose, first of all, I also want to thank you for taking your time out and saying yes to the opportunity uh, to really inform us, to advocate and help us all of these years. Uh, you stage four cancer survivor. My God. And this was a couple of years ago. And let's just start by when did you find out and how did it all come about? And Cynthia, you jump in too. Okay, so in 2002, I, was, um, I wasn't having any symptoms. I was working and going on with my day. And one morning I got up to take a shower to get ready to go to work. And I saw this little nodule in my navel and I went to several doctors and they said they never had seen that before. And uh, I finally went to diagnostics and they found out that I had cancer. Mm -hmm. And they told me to go and get an MD Anderson as fast as I could. So about a couple of weeks later, I went over to MD Anderson and they looked at all the x-rays and everything that they had taken. And, you know, when you're waiting on a doctor and waiting on your results, you're sitting there wondering what they're going to tell you. Mm -hmm. So the doctor comes in and he tells me that you have stage four terminal colon cancer. Mm. The cancer had spread it to my navel, to my stomach, mm. to my liver, to my lungs, and to my ovaries. Oh my he God. said that if you live six months, it'll be a miracle. So at this point, the only thing that you hear is you have stage four cancer, because when you hear that, you automatically think of death. Yes. You don't think it's just, you know, that cancer, you that's death. But um, I fought it for seven years. Mm. The cancer came back twice. It came back in my lungs and it came back in my upper respiratory area. Mm. So with seven years of battle, I'm still here. Wow. Thank God. Thank God for you. Thank yes. God for you. My God. There was something but, that you said that was personal. You said this is very personal. 
It says Rose knows about colon cancer. She is one of the rare survivors. Only 11% of people diagnosed with stage four colon cancer survives. So just to put that in perspective, out of 100 people, 11 people survive. You said Rose did her colonoscopy at 50. She says the doctor found polyps, removed them at the time. He recommended I return in five years, but I didn't like the drink. A bowel clearing solution that's part of a colonoscopy prep. So I didn't return. 10 years later, something was protruding from my navel. My polyps had grown back and multiplied. I had stage four colon cancer with the prognosis of six months to a year to live. It had metastasized in my liver, lungs, and ovaries. I was not a candidate for surgery. I was terminal, as you stated. Wow. Yes, I was terminal. They said that uh, you're not even a candidate for any type of surgery. And if you live six months, it will be a miracle. Wow. What made you have the will to live? My children and my husband. Mm -hmm. after, after six years, I had actually just said, I'm tired. Yeah. And I was sitting alone and I was crying and I said, you know, God, if this is, is this, if this is what I have to go through, just come get me. Mm -hmm. And my husband came, he said, don't you say that again. We're going to make it through this. Just keep your faith and keep praying and keep pushing. Right. Because God has something that he wants you to do. Wow. And so that's what I did. Thank God for your husband. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A seven year caregiver to see his wife going through this process. And it, I know it's hard on him because of, yeah. we, as, we as men want to fix things. We're fixers. You know, we, we try yeah. to fix things when we want things taken care of right then. But to see That's him right. trail, you know, being a trailblazer with you, fight along with you and be with you all this time. Look at God. Wow. For seven years. For, For seven, seven years. years. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good God. Wow. And that's one of the good things that cancer patients uh, is afraid of the reoccurrence of cancer. Right. And mine came back twice. Yes. After within six months apart, they came back. Wow. But and now I've been cancer free for over 15 years. You've been cancer free over 15 years. Over 15 years now. Oh, my yes. God. Thank God for that. Well, Miss Rose, he wanted you to do your foundation. Yes. And you know what? Once I was going through this, I didn't hear enough about colon cancer. Yes. Nobody was talking about colon cancer. You know, breast cancer is all over the world. The, the, yes. The baseball players wear pink. The football players wear pink. Yes. But nobody says anything about colon cancer. Yes. And that's the second leading cause of death in the U.S. today. Wow. Second leading a, cause of death. Society, society said that over a million people would get diagnosed with colon cancer and about approximately 50 people would die from it. Wow. Mm. That's why we're wearing because blue today. Of, because of lack of knowledge and right. there's not being mm -hmm. talked about and not enough being said about it. Well, you have your chair beside you. The young, uh, Ms. Cynthia Allen, you are the chair. Of the foundation? Yes, I am. Yes. I'm actually the president of the foundation. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how she talked me into doing that. <laughs> but I really believed in her cause. Yes. I see her determination. She didn't have a lot of help uh, when I joined the organization. But thank God, we have some awesome people now that are a part of the Rose B. Johnson Colon Council Foundation. And they are real troopers and go-getters. And they are actually helping to bring people to the organization. We are starting to do more events to raise awareness. And we just want to thank you today for the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to jump on this to help us to raise awareness of this, you know, of this disease. Mm -hmm. The first thing that people say, I appreciate that so much. The first thing people say is the colonoscopy at 50. I think we talked about that. 
at 50 years old, but Chadwick Boseman died, just died at 43. He may have had a history uh -huh. and whatever symptoms that he was showing, his doctors, they, they probably did a colonoscopy because we don't know if he had a history or what his family history right. was. Mm -hmm. So that may be one way that, you know, that they discovered that he had it. But let me say about the colonoscopy cam, I just recently had one. I just, you know, when I turned 60, I had to go through one and it's not bad as people anticipate it to be. They give you the solution. It's not even nasty like it used to be. <laughs> the solution. It's true. They put you to sleep through the whole thing. You don't know a thing. They found polyps on me. They removed them. Right. So I thank God. So if you have polyps, they're going to automatically remove them when they do the colonoscopy. Okay. I didn't okay. even know I had them. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm glad you speak. That's one about of that. Pam, that a lot of people hear other people saying how devastating it is. And it's not. I've heard all type of uh, things when I go out and speak. And, well, I'm not going to have one because my, my brother died of, of having a colonoscopy and it hurt. And it's just all different kind of scenarios that's going on out there. And people are very afraid. And yeah. they don't know the facts about having a colonoscopy. Right. Things that they did 10 years ago, they have improved they that now. Right. They don't do it any, like that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage everyone that uh, I've had several colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. I had to have them every year once uh, my colon, going through my journey. Right. I had to have one every year. So it's nothing to it. And that's why I want to let everybody know that it's very important for you to go out there and have that colonoscopy done to get those polyps out. Right. So those polyps will grow and turn into cancer. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you're speaking on that too. Uh, you all are also advocating and working on trying to get the law uh, changed where the health care is uh, being paid 100% when you're you know 40 and up, right? We're working on uh, the age change because right yes. now it's 50 and up. Right, exactly. And that definitely needs to be changed because yeah. more and more people now being diagnosed. And a lot of times, like you say, people have a history of it. They need to be tested a lot sooner. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you know, they always say that African American is the highest risk. Yes. And that they need to start testing at age 45. Right. Right. But a lot of us don't, we, we don't go at that age because they are afraid and yeah, they, yes. they don't know the facts about it. Well, and not only that, and uh, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it has to do a lot with fear. But you fear, know, now yeah. with the situation with the jobs and things, a lot of people don't have the funds and the finances. They can't afford it. So that's where we come in. Yeah. Uh, we try to, you know, help them to be able to afford it. We, you know, we try to make sure that they get the colonoscopy. OK, that's the key is the financing. The finances yeah. is really, truly the thing a lot of people I know of that maybe not have the uh, health care or maybe their health care is limited. You know, they'll mm -hmm. say they'll pay partial of it. Yeah. And we'll pay the rest. Yeah. And all we ask them in turn is when we have our events trying to raise funds and trying to raise awareness, all we ask them to do is come, let people see the organization is actually doing something and help us to raise awareness and help us to raise funds. Cause right now we're only receiving funds through the events that, you know, that we put on. So wow. that's how we're able to assist in helping people to get the colonoscopies. We have to put on events to make that happen. Wow. And our organization, actually will I, I'm so adamant about people getting a colonoscopy so I, I will go and pick them up if they don't have transportation I will pick them up and stay with them until it's done and take them back home that's wow. how sincere I am about having people have this colonoscopy because I don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through and of course I don't want them to uh, die at the age of 43 like Chad like uh, the like he did so we're trying to get people aware of, look, you don't have to die from this disease. Yes. This is one of the cancers that is very 90% preventable. Wow. Let's do Just this. Just by getting a colonoscopy. Wow. Let's do this. Let's take a break and we'll be right back with Ms. Rose and Cynthia. <laughs> All right. 
We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. For a limited time, get $16,000 off all in-stock Cadillac 2019 XT5 crossovers and $19,000 off all in-stock 2019 CT6 sedans. Or experience the first ever 2020 Cadillac XT6 Premium Luxury Collection, only $519 with $1 down for 39 months lease. Or purchase and receive 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com when it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. Drive the new 2020 Cadillac XT4, only $399 a month, or the new 2020 XT5, only $429 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase the XT4 or XT5 and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call. Attorney Willie Powell's. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281 281- 881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We were talking to Miss Rose and Cynthia. Let's talk about, uh, pick it up where we uh, just left off, 90% of the people is preventive preventive is that right mm-hmm. about 90 percent uh-huh. 90 percent colon cancer is 90 percent preventable if you go and get your colonoscopy right wow mm-hmm. that is something because they go in when you have the colonoscopy the polyps is the one that turns into cancer right and they remove them right then yes that's perfect. And some of the best sleep camp. People say that, you know, when I came home from mine, I slept good the rest of the day. <laughs> so I didn't even know they'd been in there, removed them or anything, and no pain whatsoever. Right. So it's not a bad thinking. Experience. It's not a bad experience at all. Right. We're mm-hmm. gonna go on the journey a little bit with Miss uh, Rose about going to MD Anderson. Let's talk about that a little bit. Just getting there. Uh after they pull out of the do- everything and they say, hey, you're terminal, you have six months, you're at uh, MD Anderson at this point. Uh-huh. Yes, I, I'm at MD Anderson and they told me, um, the only thing we can do right now is just go ahead and start you on chemotherapy. And uh, that's just gonna prolong your time, maybe in that six months, maybe eight months. And they started the chemotherapy and I took chemotherapy for one solid year, every three weeks. Mm -hmm. And that chemotherapy is no joke. It's horrible. And is it, it just kills a lot of your good cells, but it also get rid of the cancer as well. Right. It's, it's horrifying. I don't want anybody to go through that. Right. And you went through for a whole year. The first is that the I first through, time? I went through a whole year the first time. Mm-hmm. Yes, one solid year of chemotherapy. Wow! And then after that, I had uh, eight weeks of radiation every day. Mm-hmm. Every that was daily. That was daily, eight mm-hmm. weeks. Then you get. And then even after I got offered uh, the chemotherapy, uh, they put me on. Uh, chemotherapy pills Mm -hmm. that I had to take. Mm. After I got off of those, um, I stayed off for about three months, three to six months. Mm -hmm. When I went back in to get a PET scan, they saw that the cancer had returned. Wow. Yes. Then do you go back on chemotherapy again? 
I did. I went back on chemotherapy again for another six months. Mm. And then radiation. And no radiation, just chemotherapy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, at this time, your body is fighting this and you're beyond 50. You're not 50 at that point. No, I'm 60. You were 60 at that point. I was 60 at that point, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. You were fighting. Still fighting. Mm -hmm. And today, MD Anderson can't figure out uh, how my body was staying all of that and then fighting the cancer as well. Right, right, right. And mm -hmm. getting strong. And your body, you're strong. You're strong. <laughs> 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 to fight a whole year and then to fight again after that? And then after that, I fought yes. after that, came back twice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a video real quick of you being talking about MD Anderson. My advice to for someone coming to MD Anderson the first time, write all your questions down because first of all, you're afraid. You don't know, you anticipate, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if you're gonna, it's a life and death situation and be sure to write all your answers down, get all the understanding that you can get from your diagnosis, look it up, research it, so you'll be aware of what you're facing. I love that part, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when you're going in, you're afraid. Yes. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't yeah. know whether you're going to live or die. You yes. just don't know. And even after I, I took all my treatments and I got better, I went back to MD Anderson to volunteer wow. in the GI department. And I met with all the people that's come coming in that got first their first diagnosis mm -hmm. and let them know there's still hope. Yes. They look at me and I talk to them. I told them what I went through and all yes. the cancer that I had. And then they had hope because they, they could see me and say, mm -hmm. well, if she could do it, I can do it too. Right. So that's why I wanted to go back in and uh, give them hope and let them know you fight. You don't give in to this cancer. You fight it right. and put a mindset that you're going to live and not die. That's it. Wow. You said a mouthful right there. You're going to live and not die. That's the key. Wow. That's the key. Now, 15 years later, about 15, 15 years. Year, 15 years later, I uh, I designed, I mean, I got an organization together because I said, God, I have to help people. Right. I have to let them know the importance of, of getting tested so they won't have to go through what I went through. I mm -hmm. have to let them know that. Colon cancer is not a death sentence. I have to let them know that they have to uh, eat the right foods and do the, you know, go and get the test. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The test is the most important thing. So then I, I run into Cynthia. <laughs> I ran into Cynthia as I was working, you know, I was doing it and I said, Lord, I can't do it by myself. I got to have some help. Right. And the Lord sent me her. And I tell you, she's an advocate for colon cancer. I couldn't ask for a better person. Yes. She can get out there and speak. I can tell my story, but she can tell you what we're going to be doing and where we headed to in the years to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about that now. Yeah. Well, because of the COVID, we had to cancel all the, the events that we had previously scheduled to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, had a lunch and learn scheduled. Uh, we had another event scheduled for May. And we also have a big blue and white ball every September. So we had to cancel all of that due to the COVID because we don't want to have people to get infected. We want to do like Mayor Turner is suggesting people to do is do the social distancing and just wait. So we don't want to add problems on top of problems. So we canceled everything that we have for the upcoming year, but hopefully 2021, we will be able to get back out, start uh, putting more events on. We we, we do like, um, we wanna have a colon cancer walk. We wanna get back into doing that. We had partnered with several organizations to come in where we would go and we would provide a lunch and we would come in and 
for one hour and we would share information on the importance of being screened and tested with colon cancer. So we, we you know, we, we have a lot of things that we had scheduled and was planning on doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing these lunch and learns, you're educating people. Let's educate people on some of the things. Not everybody has symptoms. Not everybody has the same thing. It's diff- It's it's kind of silent, huh? It is silent because mm-hmm. I didn't have any symptoms. I had no symptoms at all. The only reason I found out that I had colon cancer because the cancer was protruding through my navel. Right. And that's one thing that the doctors at MD Anderson and all the doctors that I've seen said they'd never seen that before. Right. But the cancer was actually protruding through my navel. I had a, a little like a piece of meat that was coming through my navel. Wow. And then when it started, when I started the the, the, the chemotherapy about three weeks into the chemotherapy, it fell off. It was about as long as uh, half of your small finger. Wow. It was protruding out of my navel. Mm. Mm-hmm. And when I when it fell off, I went back to another doctor visit and the nurse practitioner came in and I showed her that the cancer had fell off, that it actually just like it had melted and fell off. Mm. And she ran out the room and got the doctors and about five doctors come in there. They could <laughs> they couldn't believe that the cancer had just actually fell off. Right. So they was just they call me my the the miracle patient because they had never seen that before. Mm. Mm-hmm. They had never seen cancer come on the outside of your body. Wow. And then still living. It's like every doctor I go to now, I tell them my story and they said I can't they look at me like I'm a ghost. They said, I can't believe <laughs> living. And you know, another thing, Cam, I want to encourage people to do, which we are as a people, we don't like to go get our yearly physicals and exams. Those are very, very important because you may not feel anything. You may not have any symptoms or anything, but the blood work can tell a lot and people Mm. need go and have their usually physicals because a lot of cancers don't have to get to stage four. Right. If they keep, you know, get their yearly physicals so their doctors can know what they're up against. So yes. I just want to stress, please get yes. your yearly physicals. And pay attention to your body, right? Pay attention, attention to your body. To your body. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you're not feeling in some kind of way, just, you know, you need to go to the doctor. Especially if you're having stomach stomach problems, you know, a lot of times we try to diagnose ourselves. If right. we have a little stomach problem, we think it's maybe something we ate or mm-hmm. something that it'll go away as, you know, a few days it'll get better. If you have having those problems, you, you need to pay attention to your body because mm-hmm. your body tells you if something is wrong. Mm. So, but we don't pay, we don't know, we don't, when we don't know the symptoms, well, we don't pay attention to them. And right. then we'll start diagnosing ourselves. Right. We'll go to Google and try to diagnose ourselves. And we're almost dead once we get off of Google. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and a lot of stuff. We'll put something in and it's. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But a lot of, you know, some of the diseases have the same symptoms. So you really don't know. That's you right. need the blood work. Yes. <laughs> That's the importance of having your physicals, getting your blood work, knowing what you get up against. Absolutely. And take the time. Most people, a lot of people say, I don't have the time to do it. I'm busy. Now, come on. I've heard that many times. Yes. Many times. They, make a lot of they make a lot of excuses. Wait, I can't go because then I have no one to watch the kids. Or right. I don't have a mm-hmm. ride or I don't have the money. I, I don't want to leave anyone behind. Right. Anyone that don't have any insurance or a lot of people I run across, they couldn't even pay for, they had insurance and they couldn't do their copay. Copay. They could play the copay. It was too, too expensive. So, right. you know, we help with, with things like that. And, mm-hmm. and we want, we don't want to leave anybody behind just because of, of they, they don't have any money or don't be, can't be able to pay their copay. Absolutely. So this time, now that we're in COVID and you all can't do anything, let's talk about where people also can uh, give money to. What can they do? How can they help? Okay. Well, right now, uh, we're having our website redesigned and updated. Yeah. Uh, 
after the COVID. So we've been just kind of revamping and updating a lot of things, but they can give me a call at 713-204-9554. Inbox me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Uh, Miss Rose, give me your number. Yeah, 281-701-5029. Mm-hmm. We are both on Facebook. So and we'll inbox- give this, this same information this after, you know, afterwards. We're not through yet, but I just wanted to have that out in front. Also, we want to talk to caregivers. Ms. Rose, let's talk to the caregivers that are caring for people that maybe have been diagnosed at this point. Uh, the caregivers that might have yes, been? Uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. Let's oh. talk to the caregivers and tell them to hang on. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the caregivers, they just they need to hang on because... Um, we need them. Right, for the life support. I, like my husband, you know, he was there for me right. every day, every day. And uh, it's hard on caregivers. Right. It's very, very hard on caregivers. Yes. Because they don't know what to do. They don't know. they looking at you suffering. Right. And they, they help. They're hopeless. They're helpless because right. they can't do anything. Right. And I know and he they, was uh, speaking positive affirmations. When you would say, I'm not going to be here, I'm give up or whatever. And he said, don't speak that. Yes, he told me, don't speak that. We're going to get through this. And but, you know, mentally, they need some encouragement as yes. well. You mm-hmm. know, because they they're not physically going through it, but mentally they're going through it. Right. And it's very hard on them. Mm-hmm. Very hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, that that's a great thing to even understand that they are going through the same process really mentally as you are going through the process. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. A lot of times they can't do nothing but just they rub can't. your head, rub your hands, or you know, because it it hurts them. They want to stay upbeat. They want to stay positive because they want you to stay encouraged. But it's hard on them internally as well. Yes. So yeah. I take my hat off to all the caregivers. Any caregiver God. that's caring for cancer, yeah. someone with cancer or anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. And then you were going, Miss Rose, you were going a whole year for chemotherapy. A whole year. But I went seven years through this. Yes. I and he went seven, seven years through this. <laughs> seven years. Seven whole years. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. The other thing we need to talk to people, especially African-American people, we as a people, the way we eat. Yes. Was that something that they spoke about your diet, changing diet? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, they did speak about diet. And then, you know, it's, it's funny because we Texans, we love barbecue. <laughs> and that's one of the things that, that they say barbecue is not really good for you because of the, the, the films that come off of the coals. Even if you use wood, the fumes that's coming off the wood is not good for you to have as well. And processed food, that's one of the main ones that they said not to have processed food. Processed food is very, very bad for you. Okay, so is, fro- is that frozen food? Pardon me? Is that frozen, Process- frozen food? Frozen is good and, and fresh. Frozen food is good, but processed food is not really good for you. Okay. Okay. And sugar. And sugar. Yeah. Oh, sugar, sugar. is not. Sugar, sugar is not. Good. That's sugar. well. We got to have some sugar, Miss Miss Rose. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we want is sugar. That body be craving that sugar for Miss <laughs> <laughs> Rose. We got to have a cake, and we got to have some junk food, and all okay. <laughs> I know, like this this one here. She cooks cakes, you know, and she had to stop because I be wanting it, and she'll bring yeah. it to me. <laughs> that is too. Funny, that is too funny. What else would, and there's some more things that we'd like to talk to people other than just letting them know. I didn't know it was the second leading cause of cancer. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. It is. It is the second leading cause. It's like, it's almost like a silent killer. It is. It is. Yeah. I understood mm-hmm. lung was the first, right? Lung mm-hmm. cancer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's and right then, Ms. In- Rose, you, you had cancer spread to your lungs. It, it did. It spread it to my lungs and my liver. Wow. And my ovaries. Wow. And my stomach. But you could. You didn't have any surgery. No surgery. 
They said I wasn't even a candidate for surgery because I had too much cancer in my body. Wow. I wasn't even a candidate for that's any why type. They call of you a miracle. Yeah, that's what they call me. <laughs> and you know what, Cam? A lot of times when you have surgeries, uh, that if that cancer hit air, it spreads real fast. People so say maybe that. that was a blessing in disguise that she did not have any type of surgeries because it might not have been the outcome that she had. But maybe because she didn't have the surgery, you know, it didn't have the opportunity to hit the air. Wow. Because when they open that cancer hits the air, it sprays real fast. Well, you know what? Yeah, that's true, Tucson. But I have a friend of mine that has was stage four uh, cancer. And that she had seven surgeries. And she just called me last week and said that she went back to take her uh, PET scan and she's cancer free. Wow. She had she seven had three, surgeries. Four colon cancer. And she had seven surgeries. Seven. Wow. And wow. She's, still, she's, she's a miracle too. And she's 47. Wait a minute, Miss Rose. You just threw that in on us. <laughs> she's 47. 47 and she's had seven surgeries. She had, she had seven. She found out that she had colon cancer and um, she talked to me and because and, she was devastated. She was, she's 47. She had yes. still, still in school and she talked to me and I give her hope and I told her MD Anderson is the best place you can go. And she yeah. went out there and she went on the clinical trials and she had seven surgeries and now she's she's alive and she's doing good. Wow. Now you said she's 47. So if insurance is telling us 50 again, that we can't get, you know, our colonoscopy, I guess, paid for a hundred percent, then she would have been missed. Yeah, there's just, she was having a lot of stomach problems. Oh, and okay. she kept she kept going to the doctor and they told her to eat more fiber, you know, it, just eat fiber and uh, it'll go away. But she kept persisting and going back telling, no, I know it's something is wrong. And so finally they gave her a colonoscopy and found out she had stage four colon cancer mm -hmm. just oh by God. having stomach problems. Wow. Mm. And they kept putting her off and putting her off. And they told, finally she said, uh, you know, something is, I know something is wrong. And right. they found, gave her the colonoscopy, they found out that she was stage four. My God. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's do this. Let's take a break and we'll be right back with Cynthia and Miss Rose. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. Drive the new 2020 Cadillac XT4, only $399 a month, or the new 2020 XT5, only $429 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase the XT4 or XT5 and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881. 881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, Ron Carter Cadillac, delivers test drives to your home or office. For a limited time, get $16,000 off all in-stock Cadillac 2019 XT5 crossovers and $19,000 off all in-stock 2019 CT6 sedans. Or experience the first ever 2020 Cadillac XT6 premium luxury collection. Only $519 with $1 down for 39 months lease. Or purchase and receive 0.9% APR for 72 months with no payments until November. RonCarterCadillac.com. 
And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, we are back with Miss Rose and Cynthia. We, let's pick up where we were just talking about. We were just talking about the young lady in her 40s. Yes, she was 40, 47 years old. And um, she, I found out that she had uh, stage four colon cancer. And she was telling me about how she pursued the doctors and told them that uh, I know something is wrong. And, and when they finally gave her colonoscopy, they found out she was stage four. Wow. Is and there a I way we need to tell... Ms. Rose, is there, Ms. Rose and Cynthia, is there a way if we feel like something's wrong with our stomachs or something, we're feeling really bad with the stomach and we just, I mean, we really know, hey, we need to see what's inside. Is there another way to persist and push to get the colonoscopy, even if we don't have a history of medical, you know, colon, you know, uh, colon cancer? They have to rule out. That's why it's important to go to your doctor when you first start uh, having symptoms of anything, because it could be something else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that you have to go to your doctor when you first start uh, having symptoms and they keep reoccurring. They have to rule out, rule out, rule out. And then, you know, they will do a colonoscopy or whatever they have to do. But it's not like you're going to walk in there and say, okay, I need to get a colonoscopy. They have to do blood work. They have to do tests and, you know, all the, the things they have to rule out. Okay. Now, if you're 50 mm -hmm. and over and you want a colonoscopy, do you have to go through the same process or you just go find a doctor that does a colonoscopy? Well, and 50, they're going to suggest that you have one and then they will get you set up and they will refer you to a gastroenterologist. Okay. Because that's what my doctor did for me. Uh like I say, I just turned 60. I didn't even know I was due for another one. I had one at 50. They said, okay, it's been 10 years. It's time for you to have your colonoscopy again. So they set me up, arranged me, and I did it. Okay. So is it every well, 10 years time. afterwards or five? Well, they told me uh, now, now I have to go back every five. Okay. But from 50 to 60, it was like, you know, 10. Oh. So I okay. guess it depends on the person's body. I, I don't know how they do that. Ms. Rose? But what I was about to say, um, you have to sometimes remind the doctor, okay, I'm 50, I need to get a colonoscopy, because the doctors not don't always uh, remind you that you're 50 and you need to have a colonoscopy. So everybody should know that to have a colonoscopy at age 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot okay. of people don't even think about having a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. That's true. People don't even think about it. Right. You know, they, it, if they don't feel nothing, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So they <laughs> they don't even they don't even think about having a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. They just you know, if they go for the yearly checkup, they right. they they might forget to say, "Well, doc, is it time for me to have a colonoscopy?" Mm -hmm. Or either the doctor might forget to tell you that it, you're 50 now, you need to have a colonoscopy. So every that's why I'd say the education comes in at. To let right. people know at age 50 or 45 to be sure that you go and have your colonoscopy. Right. Absolutely. Because that's one of the things that nobody don't think about. Everything, you know, they think about, well, I need to go and have, go to my heart doctor, get my, be sure my heart is working right. Or right. be sure, you know, that everything, but they never say anything about having a colonoscopy. Mm. There's a lot of afraid to say anything to their doctor because they're afraid to get one. Yes. Yes, yes. And we want to reiterate that it's not as bad as it was, right? Oh, no, it's, it's, not. Not. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't know if you knew, uh, Cam, but Nene Lee's husband had uh, colon cancer. Oh, wow. Greg Lee. Yeah, yeah Greg. Yeah, Greg had colon cancer, and he came to MD Anderson, and he's doing fine. Wow. So MD Anderson is yeah. the key. MD Anderson is, is the key. They're the key. They've they made exactly. a lot of strides. Yeah, they've made a lot of strides. I mean, even the chemotherapy is not as bad as it used to be. It don't make people sick as it used to be. You know, it wow. used to at one time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you see oh, some yeah, changes, Ms. Rose? It, now. it made me really sick. <laughs> yeah. They have improved the chemotherapy now because it, it made me really sick. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Very, really. Wow. It's improved a lot now. It improved a lot. Good, 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 good. Well, we'd like to say to you that uh, we appreciate you, but I also want you all to reiterate uh, some things. We've got about probably 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, Cynthia or Miss Rose, either one go first, and then of everything about the organization again, we want to reiterate, you know, how to contact you. Uh, what are your goals this year, mm -hmm. even though COVID is there? You still have to have help financially. Exactly. Because now, these are the uh, colon you want, you're helping people with colonoscopies that are uninsured and underinsured. Yeah. Some people cannot afford the uh, the copay co for their colonoscopy. Right. right. But our big thing is really to, our organization is really to bring awareness for people to know, be aware about colon cancer, know the symptoms. Sometimes you may not even have symptoms, but just be aware mm -hmm. of your body. Yes. That is the key. And the importance of getting screened and tested. Yes. Tell some of the symptoms, Cynthia. I don't know the symptoms right there. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. She's giving me a little piece of paper with some of the symptoms that a person may exhibit. Okay. Uh, bleeding from the rectum. Uh, you have uh, blood in your stool, uh, a change in, uh, let's see, the shape of your stool, or either you have uh, severe cramping in the lower part of your stomach. Okay. So these are, these are just a few of the symptoms that a person may, you know, they may have. But of course, like I say, a lot of symptoms can mean something else. They don't always mean colon cancer. Right. So the key is just going to your doctors, getting your checkups. That's I can't stress that enough. Get your checkups. Be, you know, educate yourself. Right. About your body. Educate mm -hmm. yourself about your body. Um, just do your physicals. That's, that I, I can't stress enough. Do right. your yearly physicals. Right. And I know so many people were telling me on uh, this weekend, they say, Cameron, colon, this is not colon cancer month. <laughs> no, March is colon cancer, but guess what? Col colon cancer just it's don't daily. happen in March. Colon yes, cancer it's every day. Every, every okay. day. <laughs> <laughs> every month. <laughs> people are being diagnosed every day. Yes, every yes. single day. Every so whenever day. I to tell somebody about it and raise awareness, I'm going to tell it. Exactly. I'm going, say, I'm going to try to raise awareness about colon cancer. Exactly. And this should be and something Cynthia we... Had, Cynthia had called me and uh, I was out of town and she said, "Miss Rose, I know it's the last minute, but would you be willing to go on the show? Yes. And I said, you can wake me up at 12 o'clock at night. I'll be willing to tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how... That's just how sincere I am about getting awareness out to anyone. Yes. Anyone, that, anyone that has a question that needs to talk to me yes. about uh, colon cancer, they can call me 24 hours a day. Yes. I'm willing to be answer my phone and talk to anyone that's going through it or just need a conversation. They can call me any time of day, 24-7. I'm here for them. Absolutely. The, the thing I love about it, you've been through the process. You know exactly. You can walk them through, especially yes. MD Anderson and stuff. Yes, yes. And that was my purpose of going back to volunteer, to yes. be able to be there for the people when they needed me and let them know that, that you know, don't fear, fight it. Right, right. Yeah. And when they say take the chemo, Instead of when they're saying six months to, you know, a year or whatever the case is, some people say, well, don't waste the chemo. Don't waste the time. Let me just be with my friend, you know, my family. No, I mean, the chemo is devastating. I'm, I'm, it's no joke. It's right. no joke. And uh, I know that a, a lot of times you have to build your body up and build your mind, make your mind up that this, this is, we're going to fight this disease. Right. It's not going to overtake me. We're going to fight it. Yes. So you have to have a mindset. Yes. If you, if you, if you tell your mind that you're going to die, then you're more gonna likely die. you're going to die. Yeah, but right. if you tell your mind that, look, I'm going to live, I have so much to live for right. my family, my children, my grandchildren, 
So you have to have a mindset to, to say, look, I'm going to fight this thing till the end. Right. And then so, you were going through also uh, just world things that were happening all through those seven years. Yes, I was. You know, mm -hmm. just life. Just life. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Share the importance of what you did with your family about getting your will and all of that. Oh, you know, state. yes. You know, yeah. when you when you when when I had diagnosed with the the diagnosis of stage four with six months to live. Yeah. I, I didn't have a will, you know, and, and everything, all this thing pops in your mind. I didn't yeah. have a will. I didn't, I didn't think of having a will done and, and, uh, and, and life insurance and, right. and your plots and, and everything. So I, I tell everybody today, yeah, this is not our home. Yes. We have to make preparations to whatever, mm -hmm. if you, whatever, if it's colon cancer, whatever cancer, or you get in a car accident or whatever, whatever you need insurance, you need yes. to get a will done. You need yes. to be sure that your family don't have to go run around and do this after you're gone. Right. Get your will done now while yes. you have a voice. Mm -hmm. Get your pre-need now while you still have a voice. Mm -hmm. your family. Let wishes. your family know your wishes and what you want done at when, so why you still have a voice. Yes. You have a voice now. Yes. So don't wait till the last minute and put your and put your family in all this pain and misery. If when you pass away, then your family have to go around and try to figure out what you want done. Do it now while you still can have a voice. Wow. Yes, I agree with that. We need to reiterate that about the wheels and what it means and what we're saying with a will. Many times we're like, oh, well, we'll just write it. We don't want to upset the family. <laughs> you know, you need to write a will and you need to have a medical, uh, what is it? Power of, attorney. Power of attorney. Right. Because, you know, when you don't have a voice anymore, then you can tell that person to, you know, you don't want to be resuscitated. You don't want, you know, you don't want to have to, if when it's your time, just don't hook me up to no machines. Just right. um, let me go. Right. So all of this needs to be known. So if mm -hmm. you have it on the family and they have to make that decision, then they have to live with that decision. Well, maybe I should now. Maybe okay. I, if I would have not did that, maybe mm -hmm. mom will still be living. Right. But if it's in your wishes that this is what you want, then they don't have no they, they won't have to worry about whether I made the mistake or not. Exactly. Absolutely. Let's give the contact information again, Cynthia. My contact is 713-204-9554. You can inbox me. I'm on Facebook. Uh, right now, our website is being uh, revamped and updated. Mm -hmm. But uh, down the line, our website will be www.rbjfoundation.org. Uh, Okay, Ms. Johnson? You can reach me at 281-701-5029. Anytime, if you need any information about uh, the colon cancer, if you need to just have someone to talk to, if you just need some company, then uh, are you a caregiver and you need to find out what you should do or you just need some comforting words, just give me a call, 281-701-5029. We Ladies, I so appreciate both of you all for everything you all are doing for not just your organization, but for the world. You have touched so many lives over the period of time. And I know, Miss Rose, 15 years plus, you've talked and you've advocated all of these years. Thank God for you. Thank God for your life. I thank, thank you God for it yeah. every day. And as long as I have breath, I'll still be trying to help someone and talk about colon cancer and the importance of getting a colonoscopy. Absolutely. Thank God for Cynthia in 24. <laughs> I'm calling Cynthia. Just all waking up at night. Hey, I need some help. <laughs> well, you know, I've been up late every night, Cam. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> But I so appreciate this because you have opened the door so much for each one of us as a people. You've helped us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for having and us. Thank Pam. you for having us. Yes. God bless you and much love.
Hey, Thank family, you. let me tell you, on tomorrow we'll have Carol Guest. We'll see you then. Take care, 1230 Central Standard Time. Bye.